another super interesting market market opening today. If you like excitement, you've got it in the markets. Equities are way up this morning, maybe due to Trump's treasury pick of Scott Besant. Um, the, apparently, the market liked that. He's a solid citizen and maybe would bring a little bit of balance to the whole matter of tariffs and whatnot. I don't know. I don't know who this guy even is, to be honest with you. But I just know that that's what the headline said. Tesla was way up. We were talking We're talking about over 360. Uh, but then I'm thinking that maybe Kathy Wood came in and sold again. I mean, I, I don't blame Kathy. I understand her methods. Um, and maybe it wasn't Kathy. Maybe it was somebody else that's going, boy, time to trim. But whatever it was, the stock dropped like a rock and now is negative last time I checked, uh, going down like uh, over 12 points uh, since the since it hit those tops early this morning. Um, so uh, in the meantime, NVIDIA is also down for who knows what reason. And then uh, there's a huge bond rally going on. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an inner. Oh, and gold completely falling, you know, just dropping, I think, $75 last time I checked. We'll, we'll, we'll check all those numbers in a few minutes, but I have a, a thought right now. Either the market is right this morning and it is foreseeing an amazing business climate. I mean, we're talking about the Dow up another, you know, four or 500 point. Well, I think it's less than 400 now, but it was up more than 400. Maybe they're really foreseeing an amazing business climate. Maybe they're foreseeing that the Doge committee is super successful and, AI will lead to lowering inflation. Maybe that means it would drop pressure on the deficit and lower interest rates. <laughs> and all of those things could be true. But man, I just feel like the market is really stretched right now. We could be in for a correction like you're seeing this correction in Tesla this morning. You're seeing the correction in NVIDIA. You're seeing the correction, correction in the dollar. You're seeing the, the, the bond rally. Uh, you know, last time I looked up 11 basis points. One more thought. Seeing Tesla drop $9 in just a few minutes and all these other things, this is also a short week. Lots of potential for, um, you know, for, for, and there's a lot of market moving news. Not today, but coming up Tuesday and Wednesday, lots of things like the PCE on Wednesday, lots of things that could be moving the market this week. So it, there could be volatility. <laughs> anyway, that's, those are some thoughts before I start with the news, but let's just go ahead because there is quite a bit of news. Tesla just announced on Tesla Japan, uh, on the X account, Tesla Japan, that Optimus is coming soon. Interesting. What does that mean? Maybe it means that Optimus will be working in the Tesla where manufacturing facilities in Japan. Um, but that's that's just you know pure speculation, something I do a little of here on the channel. Tesla Roddy says, as could be seen in the aerial footage. Okay, so you may have seen this on X if you pay any attention to X. Pictures up at Fremont showing a bunch of covered vehicles up in the Tesla lot. I thought Tesla Roddy did the best job of maybe thinking about speculating again about what's going on there. Um, the covered vehicles were evidently of different designs. There's about 12, 14 of them. At least one of the covered vehicles seemed like a low-slung, sleek car, while others seemed to be shaped like crossover SUVs. Interestingly enough, some of the crossover-shaped vehicles underneath the covers seemed to have a back that was more squared off than the Model Y's iconic sloping rear. It remains to be seen exactly what these mysterious vehicles are or why Tesla decided to keep them covered in the first place. Tesla, after all, has been running several prototype, prototypes of the much-rumored Model Y refresh on public roads for months. And these vehicles were mostly uncovered, save for protective covering in their front and rear. Overall, it's no surprise to see Tesla watchers being excited about the recent footage from the Fremont factory. Tesla, after all, has a number of vehicles that are expected to be released in the near future. Vehicles like the next generation Tesla Roadster have been in the pipeline for several years now. The highly anticipated Model Y Juniper update is expected to be released next year. And then they don't mention, of course, the 2.5 vehicle, which is also supposed to be hitting us next year. Um, okay, this is from Joe Gebbia. He goes by uh, the handle J, G E B B I A on X. This is the hidden magic of the Cybertruck that you have to drive to understand. The steering wheel makes all previous steering wheels seem like black and white television. 
you don't want to go back. Also wonder how many accidents it will prevent as you can change the direction of the car so much faster than the old steering wheels. No more hand over hand to turn a 180. So I thought that was interesting commentary. I have not driven a Cybertruck, so I don't know. We could ask a bunch of people that are on this channel how they feel about the uh, the the steer by wire after they've had thousands of miles now to to use it. Mario Knopfel is reporting that Morgan Stanley says Elon's Doge committee could boost U.S. stocks. What did I just say? Morgan Stanley's Michael Wilson believes Elon's involvement in the government simplification could boost U.S. earnings and stock market performance. Wilson notes that Elon has a track record of executing on challenging goals. You think? He foresees a high beta environment with policy changes influencing equity momentum. The strategist expects a highly reflexive environment, with equities likely taking their cue from other markets more than they normally do, especially rates and FX. So the dollar and the bond rates, he thinks, will be the thing that people will take their cue from, as those trades will give us some indication of how successful Elon is being. Elon, and I, 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 I go along with this, Elon threatens to primary, oh, this is that's the end of that story, this is my story. Elon is now threatening to primary Republican senators who get in the way of the Trump agenda. Probably congresspersons too. So I think that's probably um, going to have a chilling effect. What do you think? Um, I'm not as smart as some of these other geeks out there, but I do intuit things sometimes that just make sense when I don't really fully understand the science, fully understand the math, the, the, the computer, you know, nerdism. But here's one, you'll remember me talking about this maybe two months. If you're a regular on the channel, you'll remember me talking about this two months ago. This is from Reigns, 1221, one of those guys that's way smarter than me. I believe Tesla internally uses generative AI based on intervention video clips to predict a few seconds into the future. This just totally makes sense. Okay, if I do a, a re, if if I uh, 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 disengage my FSD, and you know for whatever reason, it would just make sense that if that disengagement was a significant disengagement, not just because I wanted to go faster or slower or you know was going to miss an exit or I thought I was going to miss an exit, but you know something more significant than that. It would only be, make sense to me that Tesla would run that forward on simulation and see what the likely outcomes would have been. Would the would the car likely have hit the curb? Would the car have likely hit the other car, et cetera, et cetera? What might have been the actual outcome? And then, okay, so let me just read on. This allows them to understand what FSD would do in the final moments without an intervention. I think they're very confident about determining whether, without intervention, FSD would avoid the accident at the last moment or not. When Elon discusses it, he used the phrase miles between necessary interventions. My interpretation of this is miles between predicted accidents. I totally, 100% agree. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, why would a shock think that as this number keeps growing, they will surpass humans in quarter two of 2025. Interventions rate cannot be compared with the human accident rate. It's not apples to apples, right? <laughs> Only predicted accident rate can be reasonably compared with human accident rates. Man, this is exactly what I said. If you check the post I quoted below back in 2023, he says, Tesla AI actually described the exact technology he is now talking about. I believe that this is the cornerstone for validation as well as RLHF training. I believe it too, and have been saying so for some time. Sawyer Merritt, Says, seven cyber trucks were in yesterday's Montreal Santa Claus parade, each towing a float. About 300,000 people go to the parade each year. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Also, the, the uh, cyber truck and other and the cyber cab and other Tesla vehicles were at the LA Auto Show over the weekend. Um, very, very popular booth, apparently. He says Tesla is likely to continue. No, this is another story. Tesla is likely to continue to move higher through year end. This is Gary Black. 
As investors get more bullish about a likely Trump directive to streamline the approval process for deployment of autonomous vehicles, which favors Tesla's generalized go-anywhere approach. Adding to bullishness will be the launch of a cheaper Tesla vehicle in the first half of 2025, which we believe could be a Model 3 hatchback priced at 30 to 35,000. In the next few weeks, we expect DE Chancellery Judge McCormick to again reject Elon Musk's 2018 comp plan as being unfairly granted, despite 2018 and 2024 shareholder vote votes overwhelmingly approving it. And he thinks that the Chancery's previous finding uh, will be the reason why they stick with what they already decided. Um, so since Tesla is now trading at 110 times 2025 EPS, um, yeah, this is high. Okay. <laughs> um, year to date, Tesla has now outperformed both the S&P and the uh, NASDAQ. Tesla up 42, uh, Standard & Poor's up 25%. Uh, percent. And uh, NASDAQ up 23. So with all the gains since the election, all three, oh, this is since the election, over three years, Tesla still legs the S&P and the NASDAQs. Um, but uh, so therefore it has room to run, I suppose is what he's suggesting. Troy Teslike is out this morning. He cut his delivery estimate uh, because he thinks that the Cybertruck shipments will miss. He thinks this is because the 7,500 IRA discount has still not been approved. I don't think he's right, but I wanted to report it. Uh, okay, this is Randy Kirk, by the way, and we will have a change of programming. And the change will be that on a Monday night, Larry will not be here. How can that be? But Larry kindly switched with Nick. So Nick will be on tonight. So Nick at night, tonight, Larry tomorrow night. So watch for those two. And of course, Brian White, as usual. Um, liking and subscribing, of course, is always generous and thoughtful of you uh, hitting notify so that you reminded of future shows and then of course it's time to buy your cyber truck and or join patreon uh remember that not only is the is the cyber truck a great christmas gift but autographed copies of my book would also be a great gift if you have people out there who you think would benefit 25 dollars across the board for one it gets down to 20 I think you know, all right, uh, 25, two is 45. Any t combinations of any of those things, you can get two of or five of or 10 of, you can get the price down to $20 delivered. All right, this is from Winton Ark, W-I-N-T-O-N-A-R-K. There is value in an audacious mission, even when the end goal is not directly capitalizable. He's talking about Mars. The tech required to master Mars is so badass that upon that upon development, it turns out to be remarkably valuable on Earth, not least because no other team has the determination to follow the hardest path. I suspect that the option value of a Mars colony fully considered could be capitalized over an appropriate time scale. But the tech required to just barely make Mars viable is so massively performant on Earth that it opens up all sorts of terrestrial option value that we might otherwise never have explored. So, for instance, the 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 uh, Starship is what is needed to get to Mars. But in order to build the Starship, you've now just built a vehicle that will make tra flying parcels from Los Angeles to, to Hong Kong in 45 minutes cheaper than sending them by ground through UPS to New York. Let that sink in. <laughs> the Kobesi letter this morning, he says, what happened to the Fed pivot? Prediction market odds of no rate cut in December have now jumped to 41%, according to Kaushi. Just 10 days, days ago, markets saw an 80% chance that this 25 basis point rate cut was coming. Two months ago, uh, markets were pricing in 50 base point cuts in November and December. Most recently, Fed Chair Powell said that they're not in a hurry to cut rates just two months after starting cuts with 50 base point reduction. Core CPI inflation is now back on the rise and has been above 3% for three straight months. The Fed is backtracking again. But, says Randy, traders are bidding up the 10-year with yields dropping 11 basis points right now. 
<laughs> are, are they? Let's check and find out where the markets are now. So you've got the betting crowd saying that the cuts are out, or maybe the cuts are out for the December meeting. And meanwhile, the bond crowd has finally figured out that maybe it's time to uh, bid up the tenure. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Tesla, now down to 60 after being up about nine, about eight, maybe. Um, so uh, sitting at almost 350, 349.96, almost, that's pretty close to 350. The Dow Jones is up 456. The NASDAQ is up 83.92. And the S&P is up 29.36. Most of the Magnificent Seven is up. Uh, well, four of them are Apple, Google, Amazon, and Meta are up, but Microsoft and NVIDIA. NVIDIA is now down $4.83. I, I don't, I'm not sure I get it. Um, all the Kathy Woods are up except for Square. I'm wondering if Square, maybe people don't think about this, but maybe Square is getting hit a little bit. No, PayPal's not. I was going to say, so they're moving in different directions. Square is a bigger investor in in uh, in um, crypto or in Bitcoin, uh, but it's down and has been down a couple of days. Anyway, um, interesting times. Um, so the uh, percentage markets here are Dow is down a full point, one point oh seven percent. Nasdaq, I'm mean, sorry, up, 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 one point oh seven. The Nasdaq up point four two. The S and P up point five two. And Tesla down 0.82. Um, surprising. Again, I can understand Tesla not holding that big uh, uh, jump this morning. I am a little surprised that it's down. I, I, I'm not, but I think it's, I think Kathy would start to sell. That's just my theory. <laughs> it could be completely wrong. And then some progr programmatic selling uh, came in. We'll see. We'll see uh, later in the day what happens with Tesla. My guess would be it ends in the green. Uh, that would that I'm seriously thinking Tesla recovers. Maybe it ends up five bucks today. We'll see. Um, okay, let's go ahead. And I have found a new bond thing so that I could do this the right way. We've got the 10 year still down 11.2 basis points. We've got the two year down 6.4 basis points. The two, three month down nine tenths of a basis point and the two month unchanged. But there is still a 30 basis point, 20, 30, 20 to 30 basis point difference on those two and three months. So that is spread back out just a little bit. But I like the move on the 10 year this morning. That makes me happy. I don't, I'm not invested, but I do want the uh, interest rates to come down. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and go. Now I have to move over to the CNBC news here and get to the oil. All right, because the CNBC thing is still broken. Um, maybe, maybe I'm doing it wrong. Oil falls nearly 2% on Israel, Lebanon ceasefire report. I reported that last night. We've got maybe a ceasefire going in Israel between Israel and Lebanon. So we've got oil back down, the Texas Intermediate back down under 70 at 69.66. You've got Brent at 73.54. But natural gas continues to go crazy. It is up 8.18% this morning at $3.38. Um, I've given you all the reasons for that in the past, so we won't go into those again. Gold down $79.90 this morning, 2.94%. As mentioned, this is the, you know, and silver following suit down 3.14% at $30.35. So that's interesting. Comp and by the way, I've been reading about gold and silver. I'm very, very close to giving you chapter two of my journey to learn about Bitcoin and what makes it important. All right, copper up 0.55% at $4.10. The dollar retreating a little bit, but uh, it's not really significant. And we have got Bitcoin down 606 right now at 96,131. All right, so there's where you got all the different market movers right now. Um, going back over to Tesla, yeah, down 338 at 349.18. All right, so uh, once again, let me just hit you up on this one. You do not want to miss it. A fair number of you watch it. I, I know I jer jerk things around. 
I told you it was going to be on Saturday. The Brian Wong video about what Starship is going to do when it goes to the moon in two years is a must watch. You, you definitely want to go check it out. It, I'll put the card right here. Um, that was I, I finally put it up last night. Um, and, you know, the, again, fair number watched it, but nothing like what it should be getting. So if you didn't watch it yet, I have to tell you to, to go get that one. Uh, later day, Brian White and then uh, uh, Nick Gibbs tonight. Larry will be on Tuesday night as they kindly switched seats uh, in order to accommodate uh, Nick's travel plans. Uh, anything else I need to tell you right now? Uh, yeah, buy cyber right now. While you're thinking of it, before you go watch the Brian Wong video, go down and uh, get the information and send uh, to paypal.me forward slash Randy Kirk, $25 or more, depending on the five or 10 or 20 or 50 of those cyber trucks are books that you want to buy as Christmas gifts this year. It has been great talking to you. <laughs>